In my video about my collection of pro video cameras, I mentioned that the uh, battery standards are interchangeable. So this camera takes a battery standard called Anton Bauer Gold Mount, which is extremely popular in the industry, uh, but it splits uh, its popularity with uh, what is called V-Mount, this guy here. So obviously this doesn't fit on here. And I don't have any gold mount batteries. This is the only gold mount thing I have, so you can see what it looks like. You got these three studs, and uh, it just uh, goes on there. But this is not a battery. This is a 110 volt power supply. You put in an IEC cord here. It produces voltage uh, out the uh, four pin XLR, so you can plug in other accessories, um, and then it powers the camera. So if I want to go out in the field and use this thing without a power supply, without a, a generator, uh, I'm out of luck. Now, I, I didn't have any batteries at all before, but I decided to buy a couple of V-mount batteries after that video. These are the cheapest ones I could find. They were $89.95. And if that sounds outrageous, you got to understand that the real pro ones, if you're actually buying one from like a serious broadcast supply house, um, those brands are like $250 for what would be, you know, in, a, in like a USB battery bank, which is very much very similar to what this is, just a bunch of lithium ion, like 18650s in a trench coat. Uh, you'd pay uh, $12 for this. But the cheapest, like, Amazon six-letter no-name brand available is $89.95. So I don't want to diversify my stock, right? I want to get just V-mount uh, the same way the studios only want to get one battery standard. They don't want to have to search around to find the right battery, and they don't want to have to buy twice as many batteries as they really need. They want to just make everything in their house either a V-mount or a gold mount. I've decided that I want to go with V-mount. One of the reasons for this is that my uh, Sony PVMs also take V-mount, as I demonstrated in that video. So I can actually dock this on the back of one of my PVMs, uh, the little uh, like 8-inch uh, CRT Trinitron field monitors, and um, run it directly off the battery instead of off 110 volts, which is wonderful for a CRT. It's also convenient just here in the office that I don't have to drag out a 110 volt cable whenever I want the, to run one of the PVMs. I can just pop this guy on there and run it. And you can't change the battery plate on the PVM. Uh, so I decided to go a V-mount, so I would have something that would work with those. Now, the batteries themselves are quite remarkable all on their own. I'm going to take a minute to tell you about these. As I said, these are very much like USB battery banks. You know, they've got the, the quick little uh, level check, and in fact, they even have USB ports here on the side. I'm guessing this is just the sort of dumb USB where you'd be able to charge maybe an iPhone or like a USB light or something like that, but it probably doesn't negotiate the kind of current you need to charge like a modern Android phone, so probably limited usefulness. But the point is, it really demonstrates this is just like a, a power bank. The neat thing about it is that it's 12 volts, and 12 volts is a far more useful voltage for things I do in my everyday life than 5 volts. Obviously, it outputs it here, so you can plug it into a V-mount device, but in addition to that, this flap here covers up something called D-tap. So that's D-tap. It's just uh, 12 volts on a couple of pins. You can see the pin out right there, positive on the right. And what you plug into this is a whole great variety of adapter cables. Got one right here, in fact. Uh, this guy here adapts from DTAP out to a four pin XLR. So I can just uh, plug this in here. And then if I have something that doesn't have a normal battery input on it, I could plug this in. And to illustrate just how cool that is, I've got two eight inch Sony PVMs. One takes a V-mount, one doesn't. It just takes the 4-pin XLR. I could run both those TVs off this one battery. And they make larger capacity ones too, so even though that would probably drain this battery kind of quick, you can get ones that are this thick or this thick, and uh, I could probably run those TVs for several hours off just one battery. And that is, I mean, that beats anything in the entire consumer market. There's nothing that cool that you can buy as a normal individual. Nothing. Nothing. You want everything to work like this, right? I mean, we just have no power standards in the consumer world. And then in the video world, you know, you can you can hang this on the back of your camera, and then you can have this D-tap fan off through a hub to power your audio recorder and your video light uh, and your wireless transmitter all off of one battery pack. You can even get an adapter that you can hang on the back of the camera that lets you hang two batteries, one here and one here, and then you can D-tap some off of one and some off of the other and you can swap one out while the other one keeps running the camera, so you can run continuously just swapping out one battery at a time, and as long as both don't go dead, you can just keep running indefinitely. Absolutely everything is 12 volts, so everything works with everything else. I love it. The problem, of course, is just that this guy doesn't have the right mount. Now, I've purchased a replacement mount plate for it, and I got this on Amazon for 15 bucks. Uh, this one is a completely no-name, the name is like Finito or something. I'll put a link in the description in case you're looking for one. It's not one of those promoter's links. I'm not getting anything for it. I'll just give you the link because this one seems okay. It's actually got a steel plate on the back, which I didn't expect. It's not all plastic. And the wire here seems to actually be 18 gauge, which is probably about right for what this is. 
Now, of course, we have to actually screw it to the camera. And the fortunate thing about this particular plate, as you can see, it's got a whole bunch of different hole patterns on it. Um, I've plugged most of them with these rubber plugs it includes because I intend to use uh, these four holes. However, if you take a look here, this one doesn't have that type of hole pattern. Those screws here, there, 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 and there. And I could have mounted this that way, but I want to illustrate something about this camera. Okay, so as we take this off here, uh, you'll first notice there's a lot going on back there, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But also, take a look in here. Look, there's the other hole pattern. Now, I only just now checked, and I think... I think not all those holes are compatible. I think the top two will fit, but the bottom two, I don't think will. So I was going to say that this thing supports a couple different mount standards, but apparently I'm just full of it, and it actually doesn't. So it's a good thing that this thing does. i got to disconnect the uh, Anton Bauer mount first. And let me make a point about that while I'm doing this. The camera is a Panasonic, but the mount plate is made by Anton Bauer. This is not a Panasonic you know, three stud standard or something. This is not a genericized plate. This is actually Anton Bauer brand. And the fascinating thing about that is that it's not aftermarket. This was not installed, as far as I can tell, by the purchaser. This was actually OEM'd by Panasonic from Anton Bauer. I looked on their website and learned that this was an OEM product. So this completely blows me away. I can't believe that Matsushita, Panasonic, was willing to OEM a part with the brand name and everything. That, <laughs> I've got nothing. I can't, I can't believe that happened. It's not like multinationals of this sort to behave like that. To, you know, they're, they're fiercely competitive. And in the consumer market, Sony or Panasonic would never tolerate something like this. Never, ever, ever. But in the pro market, they're willing to capitulate that maybe, you know, it's not worth it to try and dodge Anton Bauer's patents. Maybe that was it. Or maybe it wasn't worth it to, to do the, you know, the manufacturing because this is actually kind of a sophisticated device, if you can believe that. Uh, or, or maybe they just didn't, I don't know. I don't know what their motivation was, but I'm astonished that they actually shelled out the money to buy the real thing rather than just make their own compatible one. This simply does not happen in the consumer market. It never, ever happens. You will never see it. I've never seen it. So now, um, on the flip side here, there's a lot going on inside this thing. And the reason for that is that this also has a uh, semi-proprietary Anton Bauer feature, and it's called Automatique. Uh, and I just discovered this when I was taking this thing apart the other day. I'm like, wait a minute, there's a switch down here? What on earth does this do? Well, one of the big driving applications for DTAP is to power video lights. So like when you've got, uh, when you're doing an interview with somebody uh, in the field, for instance, and it's nighttime, you just have a big old like 60 watt light hanging off the top here, uh, just blasting into their face, you know, because otherwise you won't get the shot. It looks terrible, but you know, it beats nothing. Uh, and so you run those off the, uh, the same battery as the camera using the DTAP port. Well, this guy has a feature when you, uh, when you have the switch in the off position, the DTAP port works exactly like they do on most batteries uh, and battery plates. It just outputs 12 volts all the time. When you turn this on, however, this little board here is a controller board that interrupts the power to the DTAP port. And then this guy here, this little wire, uh, plugs into a uh, compatible connector on Panasonic because Panasonic supports this feature. And what happens is um, I think when the red line here goes hot, that indicates the camera has started recording and then this guy turns on the DTAP port. And then when the camera stops recording, it shuts it off. So that way your light isn't draining your battery except when you're recording. So this thing is literally just the plastic plate that you hang the battery on. And even it has a lot more going on in it than you'd think. Now I do have a bit of a problem because I got to get these wires attached to this connector here. But since I don't plan on going back to the gold mount probably ever, I think I'm just going to snip it and deal with it. Godspeed. I know if I ever need to replace this, um, I'm sure I can look up which Molex connector this is. It's a pretty common one, so I'm not too worried about cutting these too short. Okay, I can confirm these ones don't fit, so I'm going to pivot and uh, go to the ones that are actually intended for the Panasonic. I was so convinced this was a cool Panasonic feature where they had included the other mount pattern, but uh, whoopsie. All right, there we go. You may have noticed, by the way, that I was struggling uh, to use these things, uh, which I think are called lever locks in their actual 
trademark version instead of the uh, Chinese knockoffs I have. I'm a person who's staunchly uh, opposed to commitment of any kind, so I wanted to use these instead of soldering or you know butt crimps or something like that. Uh, with these, you just uh, flip this lever up, poke the wire in there, and then pop it back, and it grips it. And that way, uh, you can reverse it at any time. Of course, they're gigantic, so I had to trim down the uh, little mounting notches on the side that allow you to couple them to create uh, these nice little compact units. Uh, they just barely fit in that space. Anyway, though, um, moment of truth time. Let's see whether it works. If it works, you'll see the viewfinder light up. And there we go. Oh, there's no lens on there. Okay, there we go. Let's try this again. Let's see if we get a picture. All right, and there we go. Nice picture in the viewfinder there. And uh, we're running completely off the battery. That's fantastic. Now I can actually take this thing outside and shoot some video. And it's getting kind of dark out, so I might not be able to do it today, but if I can, I'll show you some footage right now. It was too dark that day, so I went out the next day and got what I could. This is a rip straight from DV, from the FireWire port on the camera. And again, this is my Panasonic AG DVC200 on ordinary DV tape, not DVC Pro like I mentioned in a previous video. The manual's confusing and mentions a DVC Pro transport when it's really just a plain DV recorder. Now I gotta get myself an actual DVC Pro camera, or maybe a Sony DV cam, or maybe both, and do a shootout between all three. I take a lot of footage of birds because they don't have to sign model releases, and because they move in more interesting ways than a person or a car. You can see them having a real bear of a time keeping the shake under control. Even with a 10 pound camera, when you're zoomed into the equivalent of like 300 millimeters, the shake is just outrageous, and there's no optical image stabilization on these things, at least not on the gear I can afford. Dogs also don't need model releases, although they're often nearby people who do, so it's tough to avoid getting the owners in the shot by accident, but again, it's nice to have something dynamic to practice follow focusing on. This guy gave me a run for my money as well, but I managed to get a decent shot of him in the end. Anyway, here's a little more B-roll I shot out there. Imagine you're watching some content-free news piece about how COVID is affecting our nation's parks. Well, I thank you for watching and invite you to subscribe with the promise that my next video will have a little more meat on its bones. So here's that. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you liked any of this, and I promise my next video will have a little more meat on its bones.